Mm. All right. Um, I'm Gustav Johansson and I run Jävlekot, which is Sweden's largest vegan food blog. And my campaign is called Hashtag Save the Veggie Burger. Uh, and it's aimed towards the European Parliament's Agricultural Committee, who wants actually to ban the word vegan burgers, vegan steaks and vegan sausages. And I think that's um, an absolutely bizarre idea. But the, the thing is that there, ex there exists um, a similar ban towards dairy in the entire uh, EU today. And in France, there is a similar ban on, on meat products. So it's actually not that uh, way off to imagine that they could actually pull this through. But I think it's really not something that, you, that would help further the uh, eating of sustainable foods. So you should really make it easier to find and to choose uh, sustainable options, not make it harder. Because they want to replace the word burgers and discs, uh, burgers and uh, sausages with discs and tubes, which I don't really think would um, uh, what's the word? confuse consumers. What were your thoughts when you heard about this? Well, at first, actually, the decision came through on uh, April the 1st, so I thought it was a joke. <laughs> but um, uh, I got that. Uh, but apparently it wasn't. But then since I knew there was a similar ban on dairy products in the entire European Union, I wasn't that very surprised, but I was very disappointed because now with all this, this focus on after Gre Greta Thunberg and so on, on what the politicians should do to help the climate, uh, this is a proposition that goes exactly the wrong way and actually makes it harder for consumers to find and consume sustainable products. And they say it's in order to help uh, consumers to not be confused in the grocery stores. So you, you go for a burger, you get a plant-based burger, oh my God. But uh, the thing is that there already exist legislations that, has to, that says you have to clearly mark what it's made of and um, you can't mislead, you can't call vegan products meat. So I really don't see the problem here because the only ones who would ever maybe win on such a legisla legislation would be the meat pro producers. The restaurants, they don't care if they sell vegan burgers or ordinary burgers. Uh, you as a consumer, you just want it to be obvious what you're buying and easy to know what you're looking for. So I was really surprised and a bit disappointed. But then also I think this is a great opportunity to lift up and to talk about the European... Um, uh, agricultural politic and uh, how much it influences both our lives and what we can eat. So what they regulate on the European level on about agriculture is really affecting what you have on your shel shelves in your grocery store. And I think this is the most perfect opportunity to talk, to talk about it for the European election. How come uh, this issue is so important for you? Uh, well, first of all, I'm a big burger lover. I, my whole, I, since I told you I've got this big food blog, and the idea, more or less, of that food blog is to make it easy for people to find the food that they love and upgrade it. Because so, my own journey was, uh, I was raised in a very meaty home. My father was a farmer's boy, and he was really, really good at cooking classical Swedish dishes and on, in the summertime we barbecued a lot so I really love meat dishes but then I became a vegetarian at 19 and I ex experienced this this almost like a con this having to choose between eating good or doing good and I was not having that it was really hard for me to accept that the, I would have to give up everything I love just in order to eat better so I started the blog as a way to experiment myself forward towards trying to find ways to eat normal food, but vegan. Because I think it's really hard to make a lot of people to take the transition into more sustainable food if you're actually also give, asking them to give up everything they love. It's much harder to learn people to do something new rather than to, do the th to tr transform the things that they love into something better. And the burger is such a, a good symbol for this. I might, of course, I love burgers, but that's not the only thing I love. But the burger is a very powerful symbol because it's something that everybody can relate to. A lot of people love it. And it's something that has already been translated into so many different shapes. There's fish burgers and chicken burgers and there's green burgers and cheeseburgers and whatever burgers. 
And the idea that a burger has to be meat is so outdated. It's really just a dish and it can contain whatever. And that some politicians now wants to close that in and say that you, meat, a burger has to be meat is like taking 10, 15 steps back into the past and not looking into the future where everybody, including the meat farmers, really wins on combating climate change. And that's not being done by forbidding the word vegan burger. It's like forbidding the term electric car to defend Volkswagen. That's absolutely stupid. What are your highest hopes for this campaign? Uh, well, one I'd, the first hope is that it uh, reaches a bit outside of Sweden, because Sweden is just one of the many countries in the European Union, and we're, we might be one of the most vegan-friendly countries where this idea has an easy starting point. But unless we get the word out to Denmark, to Germany, to France, maybe Great Britain, we don't know if that counts, <laughs> Uh, then we're not going to get anywhere with this. And the second is that it's a great opportunity to talk about uh, the possibilities with ve vegan food uh, for combating the climate change in the European election. Uh, this way of doing it, uh, creating a climate campaign, what do you yeah. think about that? As an well, I think it's, uh, nowadays it's absolutely crucial that you get the, op the op uh, opinion with you because the politicians are really just uh, influenced by one thing and that is being re-elected. So if you can take an issue, raise it up to a level where the politicians feel that this is a question affecting their abilities to be re-elected, then that's the only thing that will really make them start to shift because I think that's one of the problems with climate change that it's such a long-term thing that ordinary people aren't really seeing the effects in their everyday life even if the companies are doing it and they might act the thing that politicians really are affected by is the ability to be re-elected and if they start to enforce laws that's that ordinary people don't really relate to and can understand why this is necessary then it's hard for them to get re-elected and if that, this, that disconnection between what you need to do and if people understand it really affects our ability to get politicians that are going to make it. So if we can start a campaign that helps people understand why the politicians need to do this, then we have the opportunity. Otherwise, it's, you, you, you could get all the politicians you want with you. But if they th feel that they are not going to be able to get this past their electorate, then it's not going to work. So you have to start with the, ki the, the people. And then finally, uh, for everyone out there wanting to start their own campaign, what yeah. would you like to say to them? Uh, do it. Uh, but the, tips, the tip is really it has to be very focused. It has to be clear enough that you can uh, uh, explain it to someone in like 30 seconds very, very clearly. Um, so see if you can find a very clear problem with a very clear recipient and a very clear solution. Then you have a campaign.